So first of all, let me show you grossly. If you see, if you look at the tumor mass over here, so they are yellowish. And you appreciate everyone. Yes, there is a yellowish periodal well circumscribed. This is in few cases, it is like this. In other cases, it might be widely infiltrating. It has already compressed the tumor, uh, the kidney. Okay, the large bulk, bulky mass with multiple areas of, uh, you know, they have different, different areas of coloration. Some areas are darker, some areas are lighter, some areas are hemorrhagic, some areas are grayish in color. So basically, this is called as a typical variegation of the color with areas of hemorrhage and whitish area of the stroma as can be appreciated over in this diagram. So as you can see, the pale tan brown tumor, as you can appreciate, well circumscribed tumor, as we can see, they are large tumor actually. And if you see the most striking pattern that you will see, can you appreciate the, the, the membrane, the cytoplasmic membrane, the thick cell membrane? very important features now one can you appreciate some of these cells are large some of the cells are small in the same there is no zonal so there is a mosaic pattern yes you all understand what is a mosaic what is mosaic have you seen mosaic the floor the tiles okay so they have a mosaic pattern classical and the cytoplasm if you see they are quite pale flocculent reticular and you can see thick blood vessels also over here thick blood vessels are also seen over here so is it very clear how to differentiate both the clear cell RCC versus the chromophobe? Another thing, so can you appreciate the irregular branching slit like? This is the classical appearance you will get. You will not get in any other type. And in, in between, you have the fibrous stroma. So very important tubules with jagged branching lumens embedded in an abundant fibrous stroma with a, and lined by cells which are small with, with you know high NC ratio, very less amount of cytoplasm. It is typical of collecting duct carcinoma. That's so good thing. evening everyone. Today's topic of discussion is the kidney tumors. And today we are going to see the classification as well as individually we are going to read about the important kidney tumors. And we will also see the staging and the grading of the kidney tumors. So let us begin without any delay. So according to the latest WHO classification of the tumors, if you see, so basically the, the tumors of the kidney are divided into renal tumors. Okay. Then we have metanephric tumor, neuro, nephroblastic and cystic tumors occurring mainly in children, mesenchymal tumors, then mesenchymal tumors occurring mainly in children, mesenchymal tumors occurring in adults, mixed epithelial and stromal tumors, neuroendocrine tumors and miscellaneous as well as metastatic tumors. So out of these, the renal cell tumors, if you see the clear cell renal carcinoma, multilocular cystic renal neoplasm of low melanin potential, papillary renal cell carcinoma, then we have chromophobe renal cell carcinoma, collecting duct carcinoma, renal medullary carcinoma, MIT family as well as succinate dehydrogenase deficient renal cell carcinoma. So these are the more important varieties. Okay. Others are like renal cell carcinoma, unclassified, clear cell, papillary renal cell carcinoma. Then we have metanephric tumors as well, if you see. So in case of metanephric tumors, we have already read about the metanephric tumors in case of pediatric renal tumors, the metanephric adenoma, adenofibroma, and the metanephric stromal tumors. Then the Wilms tumors, we have already read in details in the pediatric renal tumors, the nephroblastic tumors we have read. Then there are uh, now exceptionally, you can get uh, uh, primary mesenchymal tumors. They are very rare. They do happen, but they are rare. And we have seen about the pediatric renal tumors like the clear cell sarcoma, rhabdite tumor, congenital mesoblastic nephroma, ossifying renal tumor of infancy. So these points we have already read in details before. Okay. In case of adults, you have these plain spectrum of soft tissue tumors, which can be seen in any other organ as well. Okay. And then we have the neuroendocrine tumors and the metastatic tumors of the kidney. So starting with the renal cell carcinoma, if you see, it is a family of carcinoma, which arises from the epithelium of the renal tubules. Okay. And they have a very distinct morphological feature and they can arise through different constellations of genetic lesions. Now, renal cell carcinoma is almost exclusively a cancer of adults. Okay. Very importantly, RCC happens just in case of adults. Okay. It happens just in adults. And the incidence is going to increase with each decade of life until the sixth decade. And it is twice as common in males as it is in females. Now, RCC is rare in the first two decades of life, and it is comprising only 2% of pediatric renal tumors. So it is very uncommon in children. 
now there is a list of hereditary uh, neoplasms hereditary rcc it is a exam question we are having hereditary hered hereditary renal cell carcinoma it is a full exam question hereditary rcc and the notes of the same i am going to discuss uh, i am going to share at the end of this lecture so rcc can occur in association with various hereditary sy syndromes one of them being von hippel lindau uh, uh, disease okay so association with vhl is seen in occasional cases and around 33 to 50% of these patients they develop renal cell carcinoma now acquired renal cystic disease arising in the setting of chronic renal failure also is strongly associated with the development of renal cell carcinoma so these are two very important situations or conditions which are associated with development of renal cell carcinoma one being the vhl another being your uh, cystic acquired renal cystic disease in the setting of dialysis or chronic renal failure now a lot of paraneoplastic syndromes have been associated with renal cell carcinomas especially we have paraneoplastic syndromes involving hypercalcemia erythrocytosis hypertension amyloidosis all have been associated with rcc and very importantly renal cell carcinoma is one of the neoplasms if you are going to appreciate that basically that basically is uh, you know presenting as a metastatic tumor so renal cell carcinoma is a notorious tumor starting as a metastatic tumor it can present as a metastatic carcinoma of unknown primary sometime it occurs in unusual sites okay so very very important rcc can present as a metastatic carcinoma and i will tell you what is the, how you are going to understand whether the particular case is a primary rcc or is a metastatic rcc very very important few points will be discussed about that now the clinical course is quite unpredictable some cases having spontaneous regression some cases can have recurrence even after 5 years and uh, very importantly uh, you know uh, that uh, resection of metastasis improves the survival while the presence of multiple metastases will indicate a worse survival and mostly metastasis to bones is very frequently seen so these are some of the very frequent or some of the very basic uh, features of renal cell carcinoma so it is a tumor of adult okay arising from the epithelium of the renal tubule some associations are hereditary like vhl so there are many hereditary rccs the list will be posted in the group today and they can also develop as an association with cystic disease in the setting of acquired cystic disease in the setting of crf or dialysis can present as paraneoplastic syndrome and the course is quite variable and also the metastasis is is, uh, is occurring associated with rcc is very notorious okay sometimes they will present as tumor of unknown primary so the first very important uh, renal cell carcinoma is the clear cell carcinoma so approximately around 2/3 to 3 quarters of all the renal cell carcinoma they are clear cell car carcinoma now why they are called as clear cell carcinoma these are all exam questions because they have wholly or partially they are composed of cells with abundant clear cytoplasm and what is contributing to the clear nature of these cytoplasm this is the exam question so you have to say the presence of glycogen is basically accounting for the clear nature of the cytoplasm now remember the clear cell renal cell carcinoma is merely a name and you will see that that in the same tumor you might find extensive areas in which the cytoplasm is quite eosinophilic okay and rarely you might see clear cell rcc which is entirely composed of eosinophilic cytoplasm now the very important molecular alteration is the loss of genetic material on 3p chromosome 3p now other genetic abnormalities are quite common and there is evidence that alterations of chromosome 14 8 and 9 can affect the prognosis now very important the clear cell rcc has a somewhat worse prognosis than other common types of renal cell carcinoma so if you are asked uh, just because clear cell renal cell carcinoma is the most common variety doesn't mean it has the best prognosis unfortunately it has a worse prognosis compared to the papillary or the chromophobe variety so macroscopically if you see the tumor they are presenting as a globular mass which might arise anywhere in the cortex not the medulla renal cortex and they often protrude beyond the normal contour of the kidney they can grow inward or they can be diffusely infiltrated now the cut surface is variegated means they are composed of different colors ranging from soft yellowish brown to areas uh, showing grayish edematous stroma with areas of hemorrhage necrosis as well as cysts so clear cell carcinomas are, is one of the 
renal cell carcinomas where there is a cystic degeneration is seen and when it is so it is containing straw colored fluid or it contains hemorrhage now very importantly it might invade the renal venous system remember while grossing the kidney the kidney is your exam specimen in the gross when you get the kidneys they will ask you the staging there and then so i will tell you about the staging also later on so the involvement of the renal venous system okay uh, is very important so you have to document the presence or absence of the of uh, invasion in the renal vein why is it so we will discuss in the later half of the lecture now okay now very importantly the renal cell carcinomas okay they invade the renal venous system occasionally they might fill the renal vein and might extend into the vena cava or it might extend into the right atrium as well now one very important question sometimes in 5% of the clear cell rccs they have areas of sarcomatoid change or fleshy appearance they have a fleshy solid whitish appearance is there and this is very commonly seen in the renal cell carcinoma so this question will be asked as well okay now one now i will discuss about this last entity there is another type of uh, you know a very low grade variant of clear cell uh, renal cell carcinoma usually the grade 1 variant now this type is containing is completely containing multiple cysts so if this is the tumor the entire kidney is composed of multiple cysts in between solid areas are not at all present okay and such uh, uh, tumors okay which are resembling cystic nephroma and they are meeting all the criteria there is a list of criteria for multilocular cystic neoplasms of low malignant potential these are nothing but clear cell renal cell carcinoma of grade 1 nucleus with grade 1 nucleus that is what it is the multilocular cystic renal neoplasm of low malignant potential they have certain criteria which i am going to discuss in details so first of all let me show you grossly if you see if you look at the tumor mass over here so they are yellowish any appreciate everyone yes there is a yellowish periodal well circumscribed this is in few cases it is like this in other cases it might be widely infiltrating it has already compressed the tumor uh, the kidney okay the large bul bulky mass with multiple areas of uh, you know they have different different areas of coloration some areas are darker some areas are lighter some areas are hemorrhagic some areas are grayish in color so basically this is called as a typical variegation of the color with areas of hemorrhage and whitish area of the stroma as can be appreciated over in this diagram okay now this is another diagram on the left hand side as you can appreciate over here there are certain areas which looks quite fleshy so this is the whitish fleshy areas around 5% of the clear cell carcinomas can have this such whitish area so it looks sarcomatoid but it is sarcomatoid it is not a sarcoma there are other typical areas as well and some of the clear cell tumors if you see grossly if you see if such a kidney is presenting to you in a children then the diagnosis of cystic nephroma can be made but in case of adults if you see such kind of a tumor basically you can see that the entire tumor mass has been converted into a cystic you know cystic masses okay and they are separated by very thin walled locules and there is there are no solid areas so this is basically uh, a multi cystic renal neoplasms of low malignant potential why we are reading it under the clear cell because these are lined by cells resembling the clear cell uh, carcinomas and this multi loculated or multi locular cystic renal uh, uh, neoplasm it is a variant of clear cell carcinoma it is a low grade variant of clear cell carcinoma only and there is a basic criteria for the diagnosis of multi locular cystic renal neoplasm of low malignant potential these are expansile mass surrounded by a fibrous pseudo capsule so that will be present as we can appreciate over here expanding mass with a fibrous pseudo capsule now the entirely the tumor is composed of the cyst separated by very thin septa and there is no expansile solid nodule so no area of solid nodule is there present in this diagram as we can appreciate and the septa contains aggregates of epithelial cells with clear cytoplasm so this is regarded as a clear cell carcinoma with a low grade variant now because the tumor has such a nice prognosis so we are not using the term clear cell carcinoma we are using the term multilocular cystic renal neoplasm of low malignant potential if you look at the histological appearance of clear cell carcinoma very typically you will see that they the tumor is containing a network of small blood vessels and these small ves blood vessels are dividing the entire tumor into small alveolar clusters 
okay the blood vessels are sometimes very delicate and they have a uniform diameter okay and this vascular pattern is actually very very particular and specific for clear cell renal carcinoma so the first thing that you should utter is the vascular pattern it is not found in any other types now this is the basic or more common pattern but sometimes you will see solid sheet of cells as well okay the alveolus often has small central lumens which might contain fresh extravasated erythrocytes as well okay very important is this now commonly remember some of the lumens in case of your uh, uh, clear cell carcinoma they might enlarge and they undergo cystic degeneration very easily so you can see so among all the rccs the clear cell renal cell carcinoma is the one which is most prone to formation of small and large cysts which i will show you with the help of diagram and one also very important uh, thing about renal cell clear cell variety of rcc is that that all these cells if you see they are of the same size okay they are of the same size now there is one other tumor called as the chromophobe variety of rcc over there you have something called as a zonal phenomenon so in some areas the cells are of one size in other area the cells will be of another size again if you see the cells will be of other size in some area so this zonal pattern if you see Uh, uh, is very common so the cytoplasmic volume of the clear cell rcc is variable over a range from moderate to voluminous so in some areas the amount of cytoplasm can be moderate in some areas it can be uh, voluminous this is moderate and this is voluminous just remember one thing this is the voluminous and this is the moderate amount so there is a variable so this is actually the classical uh, zonal pattern which we see in case of your clear cell rcc clear cell rcc we will see this characteristic zonal phenomenon whereas in case of chromophobe pattern all the size different size and shape of the cells will be mixed together and this pattern where all things are mixed together is called as your mosaic pattern so this mosaic pattern of cell is seen in case of chromophobe variety of renal cell carcinoma okay so mosaic pattern with cells of different size and shapes are classical of chromophobe rcc whereas the zonal pattern of cells wherein one area will show one kind of cell another area with another kind of cell as in there is a zonal pattern is classically seen in case of clear cell variety of renal cell carcinoma so very very important thing you have to understand now why you will say that why we are comparing the clear cell and the chromophobe because both of them the cytoplasm is clear and why is that the cytoplasm is clear because they contain abundant amount of lipids and glycogen which is going to dissolve during the tissue processing so i hope this pattern is very clear what is the zonal pattern what is the mosaic pattern and it is seen in which kind of renal cell carcinoma so can you please uh, explain it again i'm a little bit confused okay i will just explain it don't worry i will just explain this in a proper way i will explain it to you see in i am first discussing the clear cell clear cell renal cell carcinoma okay first now what happens in clear cell renal cell carcinoma that the cells can range from different sizes some of them are big some of them are small but the thing is the big cells they are in one zone whereas the small cells are in another zone so there is what is called as a zonal pattern okay the zonal pattern if you see this is a large cell zone this is a small cell zone this is again a large cell zone so this is the characteristic zonal pattern which is characteristic of the clear cell rcc whereas the chromophobe pattern of rcc if you see they have a mosaic pattern wherein the larger and the smaller cells they are all mixed with each other is this point very clear to everyone yes sir thank you is this very clear so this is the pattern this is called as the mosaic pattern which is classical of chromophobe whereas the zonal pattern is characteristic of clear cell rcc okay clear now so this is the first histological diagram as we can appreciate over here the first histological diagram of clear cell rcc as you can appreciate can you see the small vasculatures okay this is the small vasculature some of them are very small some of them are expanded containing vessel can mean some of them are expanded forming a lumen with clear cut rbc uh, presence so most of them are delicate vessels which have divided the entire so this prominent delicate microvasculature has divided the tumor cells into alveolar clusters into small alveolus cluster alveoli like clusters is this very clear okay so this is the first and this is very typical of only the clear cell rcc so in case of our clear cell rcc if the examiner ask you what is the typical 
histological feature don't say it is clear you will get zero marks over there then your viva will go towards the chromophobe variety okay you have to say the prominent delicate vasculature is the most typical manifestation of the clear cell rcc now other important the second important thing is i told you it can undergo cystic degeneration so it will contain small and large cyst containing the eosinophilic material okay is this very clear sometimes areas of hemorrhage might also be appreciable as we can appreciate in this diagram okay okay so i think this is very clear okay let us look at the differential diagnosis of the same now as i told you sarcomatoid change can be seen okay in around 5% of clear cell rcc so you have to differentiate between a primary sarcoma versus the sarcomatoid change of the clear cell rcc so you have to keep in mind whenever you get any sarcomatous area you are getting and other areas you are not getting then you have to thoroughly gross the other areas because the primary sarcoma primary sarcoma of the kidney is very 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 rare you will not get the primary sarcoma of the kidney very easily so it is more often it is a sarcomatoid chain involving a clear cell rcc so if you do further grossing and if you thoroughly gross the entire tumor you will see some areas having typical areas of clear cell rcc so that becomes very important number 1 number 2 the second important differential diagnosis is your urothelial carcinomas okay which sometimes can you know extensively infiltrate the kidney so sometimes you might confuse the areas might not be very typical so again the same thing extensive sampling is necessary so as to see the typical urothelial carcinomatous region now as i told you the metastatic rcc is okay or basically many a times Uh, RCCs are notorious. Okay, they they metastasize widely, and they are the most notorious tumor to present as an unknown primary. Okay, so how you will indicate the renal origin? The one marker you will do is PAC set, and also remember very important co-expression. This is the one carcinoma where cytokeratin along with vimentin. Now cytokeratin is an epithelial marker, and vimentin is a mesenchymal ma marker. But both these markers, okay, they occur in majority of the clear cell RCCs. okay it is unusual among carcinomas and should be taken as suggestive of renal primary because renal cell carcinoma is the only carcinoma where you are going to get both ck and vimentin positivity you will not get in any other carcinoma so if you have a basic if you have a unknown tumor of unknown primary if you have an unknown tumor of unknown primary in that case if you are suspecting the kidney if pax it is positive go for cytokeratin vimentin because if both of these markers are positive this is basically suggestive of clear cell renal cell carcinoma is this point very clear to everyone okay. now as i have already explained in the previous lecture also solitary metastasis to the other side adrenal gland can also resemble primary adrenocortical carcinoma so very important we have to carry out ihc in this case now remember renal cell carcinoma it's a rcc it is will always stain for both the ema and the cytokeratin whereas the adrenal cortical carcinoma they will not stain for ema or they will stain for ck very very lightly other markers like inhibin melanin they come positive in adrenal cortical carcinoma which i have already discussed in the previous lecture okay these are the four important differential diagnoses of four important uh, you know uh, points wherein lots of questions are asked okay now again metastasis to the thyroid can mimic the clear cell carcinoma of the thyroid now very important to uh, help uh, uh, you know determine the thyroid as the origin okay we have to do ttf and thyroglobulin okay now we have already read the thyroid gland in that i have already discussed one of the differential diagnoses so what are the clear cell carcinomas of the thyroid there are six or seven entities which i have already discussed that entire table so that is a full exam question which i have already discussed with you all now again the metastasis to the ovary can be confused with the primary ovary in clear cell adenocarcinoma so in that case as i told you you will do all the different kinds of markers okay to rule out the ovary in carcinoma now uh, there is one kind of hereditary rcc associated with vhl okay so there are many other like bird hog dupe syndrome is also there so there are many other hereditary leiomyomatosis is there so i will give you a list of the hereditary rccs at the end of this uh, today's session i will post in the group also that is a written answer only so you just have to read it and prepare for your exam nothing to teach over there so what they are trying to say over here that vhl is one syndrome associated with hereditary rcc now over here two types of tumors are there and both tumors occurs over here that is capillary hemangioblastoma usually in the cns uh, it occurs it may closely resemble the clear cell carcinoma 
of the kidney okay so both of them are very much similar now for example in usual if it occurs sporadically in a patient then there is no problem but if it occurs in a patient of von hippel lindau syndrome where both of them are seen so in that case because both of them look very similar so you cannot say whether the primary tumor of the cns is is a metastasis or whether it is a really a capillary hemangioblastoma that you will not understand so this can be resolved by going for the ema stain okay because uh, ema positivity will be there only in the clear cell rcc whereas capillary hemangioblastoma will do not have that okay will be negative for ema so doing the ema stain can solve the problem and this problem only arises in patients with vhl because in that condition you have both the tumors in a single patient clear to everyone okay. now we will go come to the second important the renal cell carcinoma that is the papillary variety of rcc approximately 10 to 15% of all the rcc is the papillary variety the male predominant and as i told you as in any other kind of rcc so these are tumors of early adulthood to old age now the outlook is somewhat better than clear cell rcc as i told you in comparison to other types of rcc clear cell has the worst prognosis okay whereas other types have a good prognosis as we have already discussed so they have a characteristic pattern of chromosomal gain and losses which are different from other rcc so there is a molecular uh, you know characteristic of this tumor characterized by trisomy or tetrasomy of 7 and 17 are very important and most papillary rcc in men they lose the chromosome y which is an important mcq a very important mcq now macroscopic macroscopic appearance macroscopic appearance and histologic appearance if we see so papillary rcc is they are well circumscribed yeah. globular tumors okay with pale tan or brown color again as the these are carcinomatous aggressive tumors they will show areas of hemorrhage and necrosis and radiographically okay this might cause the tumor to become hypovascular the tumors are large and just like any other papillary tumors anywhere in the body they will be friable granular looking like the papillas as in case of ovarian tumors also we see okay and in about one third cases there are calcifications yes which are representing what which are representing samoma bodies now the architectural pattern in 90% of the cases they have predominantly the papillary or tubo papillary papillary means they will have the papillary architecture okay like this and sometimes the section will come from here so you will get tubules like architecture so tubular papillary is the word that we are using so basically sometimes these papilla might be so closely uh, you know packed with each other that it might give a false appearance of solid growth pattern and they are composed of fibrovascular cores as it is anywhere covered by a single layer of cells and one characteristic feature over here is that the papilla contains foamy macrophages and has an edematous filled with edematous fluid samoma bodies are also pre present occasionally and the tubular this tubular architecture they consist of small tubules lined by single layer of cells identical to those which are covering the papilla so a single layer of cell covering here is identical to the cells which are covering the tubules so tubular papillary pattern is very common now very importantly there are two types of papillary rcc so one is the type 1 one is the type 2 and type 1 is more common as compared to the type 2 variety now very importantly in the type 1 variety if you see the cells are small with very inconspicuous pale cytoplasm and the nucleus is typically quite uniform nearly the the nucleus is spherical okay and they are very uniformly appearing whereas the type 2 are more pleomorphic in nature they will have a pseudo stratification pattern very prominent nuclei they are larger more pleomorphic more abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm is there okay now nuclear grading is very important in case of papillary renal cell carcinoma can you tell me the what is the name of the nuclear grading that we use in case of rcc yes forman yes. forman forman grading now do we use the forman grading currently or is there any modification that we use uh some ic yes icup so there is a modified ICUP. forman's grading is what your answer should be now okay because mitotic figures are no more used only the visibility of the nucleoli has been a uh, nucleus uh, and the pleomorphism of the nucleus is very important so this is the papilla as we can appreciate can you see this expanded papilla which is containing an and distended by foamy macrophages yes so they are distended by foamy macrophages so there's a fibrovascular pattern is there as we can appreciate from here the papillary architecture is there and they are forming small tubules like this okay 
the stromal calls the papilla they are distended by collection of foamy histiocytes so this is the type 1 variety wherein you can see and appreciate this is the basic papilla as we can appreciate the fibrovascular core is there but if you see individually the tumor cells if you see they are uniform nucleus is there all of them are small uniform nucleus with with little amount of cytoplasm okay so this one if you see this is the type 1 variety which is more common now there is a type 2 variety also wherein you can see the papilla and everything you can see the fibrovascular cores as well but one thing very classical is that they have eosinophilic cytoplasm they have pseudo stratification that means nucleus lying on top of each other you can see the stratified epithelium over here so stratification is a part over here which is not that uh, in in the part in the type 1 so you have two types some of the exam might ask you what is type 1 and type 2 so not much significance is there now a uh, very important differential diagnosis of papillary rcc is with your wilms tumor which is showing excessive amount of epithelial element so how you will differentiate basically in the wilms tumor you will see a lot of blastemal element okay or you might see a differentiated stromal element mesenchymal element in the form of skeletal muscles and the nucleus in case of wilms tumor they are elongate with tapered ends okay like this elongate with tapered ends this is the nucleus in case of your wilms tumor whereas the nucleus is spheroidal in case of of papillary rcc and very important thing is the diagnosis of papillary rcc in a young person should be made only after epithelial predominant wilms tumor has been excluded so this is the very very and the most important differential diagnosis is your wilms tumor with epithelial predominance okay okay any doubt with regard to the papillary carcinoma everyone okay i think it is very much clear Yes, sir. I didn't understand uh, that loss of Y chromosome. Uh, see, this is one of the molecular uh, uh, findings that they are ha having that uh, that in men, okay, they lose the Y chromosome. This is one of the molecular findings that they are showing. Okay, that if you will do, that means if you do the karyotyping, if you see. Uh, so the Y will be very much short, and it will sometimes it is not seen at all. Okay, and sometimes they might not be compatible with life also. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Coming to the chromophobe variety of the renal cell carcinoma. So already some few points I've discussed, and few very important exam questions over here is that approximately five percent of the RCCs they are chromophobe variety, so they are forming a very small percentage after papillary variety. So the genetic hallmark of chromophobe variety it is the loss of multiple chromosomes. It is less aggressive than the clear cell and the papillary renal cell variety, and surgery is curative for this. And uh, uh, the sarcomatoid change is similar to the other types. Okay, now macroscopically again they are well circumscribed tumors with the solid tan or brown tumors, and cystic change which was a part of clear cell variety is not seen in the chromophobe variety of. rcc so remember chromophobe and clear cell they are differential diagnosis of each other that is why they are uh, differentiating over here so as i told you over here that they also have okay cells with a clear cytoplasm they give a classically flocculent appearance of the cytoplasm they contain numerous very small intra cytoplasmic vesicles giving a pale reticular flocculent appearance and the vesicles cannot be appreciated in light microscopy but it can be appreciated by electron microscopy the characteristic feature is that the cytoplasm stains blue with a special stain is hale colloidal iron stain very very important exam question the stain that is used the other very important thing is they have a well defined very thick cytoplasmic membrane that i will show you with a very pale staining cytoplasm okay that resembles the clear cytoplasm of clear cell rcc and this variety is actually the typical variant of the chromophobe rcc now the typical variant also has very thick walled blood vessels okay and their pattern is not zonal they have a mixture of a small and large cells giving a mosaic pattern now later very important the eosinophilic variant of chromophobe rcc is also recognized which is another variant this is the classic typical variant there is an eosinophilic variant also so this you know this uh, variant is also coming under the chromophobe variety why because again the cytoplasm is uh, staining for the colloidal hale iron and ultrastructurally they are composed of the small intracytoplasmic vesicles so they are closely resembling the renal cell uh, or the renal oncocytoma now it is 
prudent to perform a colloidal RN stain on any tumor in which the differential diagnosis is including the renal oncocytoma and the chromophobe RCC. Because if they are positive for the hail colloidal RN, then they are uh, uh, positive for that. They are that it means that they are positive for chromophobe variety of RCC. So as you can see, the pale tan brown tumor, as you can appreciate, well circumscribed tumor. As we can see, they are large tumor actually. And if you see the most striking pattern that you will see, can you appreciate the, the, the membrane, the cytoplasmic membrane, the thick cell membrane, very important features. Now one, can you appreciate some of these cells are large, some of the cells are small in the same, there is no zonal. So there is a mosaic pattern. Yes. You all understand what is a mosaic? What is mosaic? Have you seen mosaic? The floor, the tiles. Okay. So they have a mosaic pattern classical and the Cytoplasm, if you see, they are quite pale, flocculent, reticular. And you can see thick blood vessels also over here. Thick blood vessels are also seen over here. So is it very clear how to differentiate both the clear cell RCC versus the chromophobe? Another thing, there is no cystic areas are present over here as it was present in the case of the clear cell RCC. Okay. Any doubts? See over here, again, another thick walled blood vessel is also appreciated over here. So this is so the second blood vessels will be present in both, right? Clear cell and chromophobe. Uh, uh, I know. I did not say that uh, it is the uh, thick in case of clear cell. When did I say that? No. If you see over here, if you see the diagram, they are there is a delicate vasculature is there. Uh -huh. That was delicate. the main criteria okay. over here, na? Yeah. That was the main yeah. criteria. Agreed. Some of yes. them I said, some of them I said, the lumen of that becomes more so the RBCs huh. can be visible. That I said. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Okay. This should be very clear to everyone. Okay. Chromophobe RCC. Uh -huh. So over here, the chromophobe variety of the renal cell carcinoma, as we can see, the hail stain of iron that colors the cytoplasm of the chromophobe cells blue in color. This is the only question you will be asked over here. Okay, and this is the eosinophilic variant. As you can appreciate, the cytoplasm is far more eosinophilic, composed of cells with deeply eosinophilic, finely granular cytoplasm. This is the eosinophilic. So for this, you have to confirm either by electron microscopy or you have to carry out uh, this particular hail stain. Okay. So the differential diagnosis, I'm not discussing the clear cell variety. Okay, uh, how to discuss with the clear cell variety that I'm not going. Okay. Uh, Yes. Okay. Very important features is the eosinophilic variant is the one which is problematic because of it very close resemblance to the oncocytoma. So in the HNE, the presence of perinuclear halos, wrinkled irregular nuclei and microcystic architecture is more in favor of the chromophobe RCC. But this is not confirmatory. Now confirmatory is the histochemical staining with the hail colloidal iron, which is diffusely positive diffuse cytoplasmic positivity in case of chromophobe RCC is very important and it supports the diagnosis of chromophobe RCC. Okay. And it is absent in case of oncocytoma. Again, uh, CK7 usually shows a strong diffuse positive in chromophobe RCC. Uh, uh, where, whereas the chromophobe renal cell carcinoma are typically negative for Vimentin. So this is again, one important point of difference between the clear cell RCC versus the chromophobe RCC. Over here, they were both CK positive along with Vimentin positive. They were CK positive, but he, they are Vimentin negative. Okay. Is this point very clear? These are all points of difference. Usually in the exam, they will ask you uh, these questions. One or two uh, kidney slides are always there and they are the most scoring slides in the exam because there is nothing much in the kidney. Collecting that carcinoma and uh, its variant, that is the renal medullary carcinoma. So the diagnosis, remember, it is applicable to only a group of a high-grade carcinoma thought to arise from the duct of Bellini, which is the medial most uh, uh, you know, tubule in the medulla of the kidney in the renal medullary pyramids, okay, which make up less than 1% of renal tumor. In general, the prognosis is very poor, okay, much poorer than the clear cell variety also. And there is another variant of this particular carcinoma that is the renal medullary carcinoma seen in young patients with sickle cell trait. Okay. So the prognosis is much more bad in this patient as compared to the normal variety of collecting that carcinoma. 
so very important over here you have to understand that from the gross appearance okay from the gross appearance you will see if the tumors are small and if you see that the tumor is present in the inner medulla then you are going to suspect okay in that case this might be a collecting duct carcinoma if the tumor is very large then you might not be able to appreciate okay then you might not be able to appreciate without histopathology but grossly if the tumor is small and localized into the renal medulla in that case you can say it is a clear uh, uh, collecting duct carcinoma tumor might, might be the tumor is centered at the level of the medulla and it might then extend into the cortex or hilar tissues either way okay so this is the collecting duct if you see this is the basic cortex and here we have the medulla this is the tubular system so usually in the medial most part in the medial most part the tumors are thought to arise from these portions i will show you with the help of diagram can you appreciate the medial most portion over here yes of the medulla so this whitish portion okay this is a small whitish tumor that is arising from the renal medulla so in this case we can say it is a collecting duct carcinoma we we might at least you know think now if you see this is not directly showing on the outside if you see the kidney grossing everyone has done you know how you have to do the kidney grossing from the outside towards the inside you have to take multiple slices so if you see this is one of the slice and you can appreciate a tumor in one of these slices so from the external outside you might not be able to see okay so histological appearance if you see they are very much similar to the adenocarcinomas and the urothelial carcinoma now very important they have a very irregular duct like structures might be cords might be nest but they are quite irregular and in between you have a lot of abundant fibrous stromal tissue abundant fibrous stromal tissue now these cells are very small with moderate amount of cytoplasm and the nucleus is pleomorphic with thick nuclear membranes and very important thing is that sometimes hobnailing will be seen hobnail appearance is seen over here so can you appreciate the irregular branching slit like this is the classical appearance you will get you will not get in any other type and in in between you have the fibrous stroma so very important tubules with jagged branching lumens embedded in a abundant fibrous stroma with a, and lined by cells which are small with with you know high nc ratio very less amount of cytoplasm it is typical of collecting duct carcinoma the cells are very much like the cells around the collecting ducts is this very clear okay this is very simple this is actually one of the favorite examiner question actually collecting duct carcinoma over here what i want to show you over here is some areas where there is hobnailing as if the cell is going inside there is a hobnail appearance okay this is a hobnailing appearance which is important over here okay. the differential diagnosis over here is that how you can differentiate between the collecting duct and the renal medullary so over here if there is any indication of sickle cell mutation in that case renal medullary carcinoma should be favored then a positive ihc for oc3 oc4 or pof1 also weighs in heavily in favor of medullary carcinoma rather than collecting duct and also loss of smar cb1 so how to differentiate so a positive oc3 oc4 or loss of smar cb1 or a sickle cell mutation is in favor of renal medullary carcinoma now another very important differential diagnosis is a high grade urothelial carcinoma now very easy so uh, a positive now rccs will become positive for pax8 whereas urothelial carcinoma they will become positive for p63 and gata3 okay so a positive pax and a negative p63 and gata3 which is usually positive in case of urothelial carcinoma it is basically suggestive of collecting duct carcinoma okay now remember any case which you cannot grade in any of these varieties you might grade it under renal cell carcinoma unclassified variety this i have already discussed now there are two important these two tumors i did not include in the previous uh, years but from this year i am including these because these have been increasingly asked in the exam especially in the paper number 4 the mit family translocation rccs or the succinate and also the sdh variety loss of sdh variety so first we will discuss these are the molecular patterns of rcc the mit family translocation renal cell carcinoma so it is a family of renal cell carcinoma containing a variety of translocation involving xp11.2 and these translocations they result in gene fusions involving tfe3 so the fusion is involving tfe3 okay it was recognized in 2004 and subsequently one another translocation 611 producing the fusion again with tfe b this was 3 this was tfeb they have also been identified and both of them they have been grouped under the mitf or tfe family so the thing that is common over here is the tfe 
Okay, so they have been grouped under the MITF or TFE family of transcription factor genes, and there is a hope that other tumors belonging to the same family will also be discovered. Now, they these carcinomas are making less than five percent of the renal tumors in children. Uh, but if you see translocation carcinomas appear to make up at least remember that carcinomas in usual. I am speaking about RCCs. They are a tumor of adult. They are not seen in children. But translocation carcinomas, that is the one which is uh, which we are talking about, including XP11 to translocation and translocation 611, they are constituting 20 percent of the renal carcinomas in children. Very very important. They also tend to occur in adults. Okay, but in case of adult, they are presenting with a higher stage. More common in females. Okay. Now, macroscopically, these are uh, tumors with solid tan yellow tumors with focus of hemorrhage and necrosis. And very importantly, if you see the XP11 to translocation tumors, they have a papillary architecture wherein the papilla is lined by abundant clear uh, cells with clear or pale cytoplasm. Okay. And sometimes they might have an alveolar or nested architecture also with eosinophilic cytoplasm. Now, some more bodies are common and they are quite numerous. Okay, they are quite numerous. Okay, whereas so this is all about the XP11 2, which has a papillary architecture, whereas the translocation 611 carcinomas they consist of nest and cyst composed of polygonal cells with pale or eosinophilic cytoplasm, but papillas are not seen. Okay, papillas are not seen over here. Now, very distinct component uh, consists of cells with a small amount of cytoplasm and dense chromatin. So they have a very dense chromatin arranged around nodules of hyaline material. Okay, in a last, so in low magnification, these look like rosette. This is a, again another fe feature if you see for your translocation 611. Okay, now translocation carcinomas with gene fusion involving this, as we have seen, they show a positive intranuclear reaction with antibodies to TFE3. So this is one basic thing, one IHC hallmark of these tumors. Now carcinomas with gene fusion involving this also, uh, you know. Uh, they also have the character, they fail to mark or they mark weakly with antibodies to the epithelial markers like the EMA or the cytokeratin. So they are CK negative. Okay. Whereas translocation 611, they are frequently positive for HMB45 and melanin. Now, cathepsin K is another marker for these carcinoma is this cathepsin K. One new marker has been developed. So this you can see appreciate over here, the large cells with eosinophilic cytoplasm having a characteristic papillary architecture, if you can appreciate everyone. So there's a papillary architecture as we can appreciate. Okay, papillary architecture. Now the next, again, very important exam question is the SDH deficient. It is the SDH deficient variety. So in case of this SDH deficient is the succinate dehydrogenase deficient renal cell carcinoma. So again, this was again discovered in 2004. So basically there was certain germline mutations and genes encoding mitochondrial succinate dehydrogenase which led to the renal cell carcinoma. So mutations of this also leads to familial variety of pheochromocytoma as well as GIST. So I've already discussed about this SDH deficient uh, variety of the paragangliomas. I've already discussed in the pheochromocytoma lecture. Okay, please go through that. Now the mean age of presentation is approximately 40 years and microscopically they are approximately 5 centimeter. They are solid with cystic change in very less cases and they are again well circumscribed tumors. So uh, histologically, what is very characteristic is that they are, uh, they show uh, the tumor grows in sheets, which very small cyst areas in between. Okay. And the cells are arranged in small alveolars, again, invested by very delicate blood vessel, like the clear cell variety. Now, again, over here also, the lumina is expanding into cyst like areas filled with eosinophilic material. And very important, the, the, the cells have eosinophilic cytoplasm, which is usually having a pale flocculent appearance like the chromophobe variety. Okay, like the chromophobe variety. Now, electron microscopy is going to show cytoplasmic inclusions. They are abnormally large mitochondria. So over here, if you see um, uh, intracytoplasmic presence of inclusions is a very distinctive feature of these new plasma. Very important. And these inclusions are nothing but enlarged mitochondria or because of the HDH deficiency. Now, non-neoplastic tubules and glomerulus is often entrapped within this tumor. And sarcomatic change is seen in a good percentage, approximately 10% of these tumors with coagulative necrosis in somewhat around 8 to 10% of them. So these are the important histological features of your succinate dehydrogenase deficient RCCs. Okay, very, very important over here. 
So this is, if you look at this diagram, you can see the intracytoplasmic inclusion, which are nothing but the expanded mitochondria. So this eosinophilic appearance that you see in this particular neoplasm and the sheets like, and you can see the small, small areas of vessels and micro, you know, delicate microvasculature as well as also seed. So the classical thing over here is the presence of cytoplasmic inclusions. Now, very important thing in case of renal cell carcinomas, especially during the grossing, you will be asked from which areas you are going to take the sections. So that will be explained by this. So you have to recognize, okay, they will lift up the Gerota's fascia and you have to recognize the Gerota's fascia. Very important. So one thing that is very important is the size. Okay. Because depending on the size, you will label it as T1 or T2. Now T3 is, are those tumors, okay, which are again divided into three A, B, C. So depending on whether, uh, you know, they have involved the veins or no, you have to see. Now, very important thing that you have to appreciate. What is the difference between the T3 and T4? Okay. So T3 may remember the Gerota's fascia has not been involved, but the tumor has extended beyond the major veins into the perinephric tissue. So beyond the kidney into the veins and the perinephric tissue, but not involving the Gerota's T3. Whereas those that have gone beyond the Gerota's fascia, including the involvement of the adrenal gland is constituting T4. So this very important, this staging becomes very important in case of kidney tumors. And this is, and then you have the end staging and the M, which I'm not discussing. There's nothing to discuss over here. So this you have to understand very importantly, involving of the veins and the perinephric tissue is constituting T3. Okay. Very, very important. Whereas that involving the beyond the Gerota's fascia is T4. Again, the answer will, uh, the question will not be li limited to the adult RCC. They will ask you about the pediatric venous tumor. They will ask you about the staging of the uh, pediatric renal tumors, especially that of the Wim's tumor that I've already discussed with you in that lecture. And all, le all questions from the pediatric renal tumors can be asked, even if you get these slides. And lastly, the Furman's grading that was modified grading system. As we can see, there are four grading system depending on, on how in at, at, uh, you know, at which objective you can see the nucleoli. So grade one deals with invisible or small basophilic nuclei with 40 X objective. If you get the conspicuous nucleoli at 40 X, but inconspicuous at 10 X, then it becomes grade two. Grade three is clearly visible nuclei. Even with the 10 X is grade three. Okay. So if it is conspicuous with 10, 40 X grade two with 10 X is, uh, is uh, grade three. And if there is a lot of nuclear pleomorphism, Okay, with or without any multinuclear giant cell or any amount of sarcomatoid or abdoid change, if you see, then it straight away goes to grade four. Is this very clear? This is the actually modified Furman grading system. Okay, mitotic figures is not a part of the system, remember, and they are rare in grade one and grade two tumors. Very, very important. And the finding, if you see more than 10 high power field, uh, sorry, more than one per 10 high, uh, 10 high power field is associated with a worse prognosis. So is this very clear? The Furman's grading, everyone, the basic staging of the tumor, the T staging is important over here. And especially the gross specimen that will be there. You should be able to say gross specimen may kya kya sections you are taking that you have to mention how you do the grossing of the kidney. I hope at least once or twice you all have done the grossing of the kidney, at least have seen someone doing it. You should recognize inferior, uh, you sorry, uh, the, re the renal veins, kaha par hai, wo recognize karna hai. where is the renal papilla, the potential space, waha par koi extension hua hai ki nahi. You have to recognize the Gerota's fascia in the exam. You have to recognize the renal sinus, renal sinus involvement hai ki nahi, because that will constitute the three year stage. Okay. Very important. So all these things, very important. You have to see, okay. You have to appreciate in the exam. The examiner will ask you, will point you, what is this structure? That is, that is very important. And uh, yes, this is it. Any questions anyone is having with regards to the renal cell tumor, the renal cell carcinoma?